All right, everyone. So um, for the Unit 3 Stretch and Explore, we're going to be looking at two tools that can be used in combination. Um, they end up being a nice pairing and a nice base so that instead of having to do so much work with the brushes themselves, um, ends up saving you a little bit of time. So um, for the Stretch and Explore, pretty similar to last two units, you'll grab the assignment download in Schoology get that downloaded and then get that opened into Photoshop. Um, and then once you have that in Photoshop, um, what we're gonna be looking at is um, you're gonna pick one of these four references. Um, these are just randomized ones that I got online. So um, you're just gonna pick one, you don't have to do all four. Um, and then just make sure when you start to draw There'll be three layers. Um, just make sure you're in the draw here instead of the format or the background. Um, for getting started, we're gonna be using a combination of the lasso tool. So that'll be this one just right here. Um, you can also use the L key to do that as well. Um, and then the other tool that we're gonna be using is the paint bucket. Um, sometimes this gets filtered over to the gradient tool so you might have this icon instead. Um, just make sure you're getting clicked off on that and then over to paint bucket. Um, paint bucket key is gonna be G. And then um, essentially what we're doing with this is instead of drawing how we would normally would, we're instead thinking of almost breaking down the composition into different shapes. So, um, what I would start by doing is, um, once I have one of these picked out, um, I'm gonna start to select colors. You can either do that with your eyedropper. Otherwise, um, you can also just do this manually as well. So if I don't want it to be exactly that same color, I could change it a little bit as well too. Um, and then what you're gonna do is, um, as you start to move over into the lasso tool, um, what can be helpful with this is to work your way from the back and then work your way forward. So I'm gonna be looking at kind of where do I see the overall sky. Once I have that selected, I'm gonna go over to my paint bucket. I'm gonna select out that color that I want and then I'm gonna drop that in. Um, then from here, then I'm gonna to start to look at kind of that next layer. So I'm gonna kind of get a base color for the mountains. And then same thing, I'm gonna to go to my lasso tool. I'm gonna to look at kind of just like general general sizing and shaping that I see. With these, you can be pretty rough at first, and then you can also use the, um, the squares up here to either take things out or to remove things. So you can utilize, um, this one is where if you forgot some information, it is gonna add it in. So then it'll add it to that selection. Um, this can be a nice option just if things aren't looking quite the way that you wanted them to. Um, you can also use this icon here where it has that um, like outline square. Um, this is gonna be taking out information. So if I have information that I no longer need, um, then I'm gonna use that to take out that selection. Um, but it ends up being a really nice tool in the sense that you can add quite a bit to this. Um, you can really start to kind of start with an initial idea. And then once you have that in, you're happy with that overall selection, then you're gonna drop in that next color. Um, otherwise, um, as you work through kind of going back and forth between the last one, the paint pocket, you're really thinking of just kind of dividing out those layers of space. So I might start to grab like the highlight that I'm seeing on that side there. I grab out kind of just general tone. And then as I continue to work through, um, just kind of looking at moving my way forward, picking out where I'm seeing kind of those general colors and tones. Um, so I'm gonna start to look at where I'm seeing kind of the forest ahead of that cliff face. I'm going to go on with my lasso tool again. Um, if you have the selection that stays, you can also do control D if it doesn't go away on its own. And then you're just looking at kind of just mapping out that overall space, um, looking at just kind of general shaping at first, getting that selected in, and then using this as a tool so that when we go in, to detail, you essentially have kind of like all your base colors in, um, and it makes it really easy in the sense that 
you're essentially kind of identifying all those base shades, kind of the base structure, and then moving from there. But essentially, it lets you um, kind of break down your composition into just those base shades, and it makes it really easy so that when we go in to um, and using the brush tools, it makes it a lot easier so you're not having to continually um, go back and add in those different shades. You're kind of thinking of just blocking everything out first, and then as you get going, um, then going back in. In detailing. Um, this can be a really nice option, especially if you do like more graphic work. Um, can be a really nice way to just kind of go through and select um, overall information that you're seeing, seeing um, kind of general kind of layers of space that you're observing as you go through. Um, this can also be a nice method when you have a sketch that you're working through. Um, it does allow you to incorporate more of that sketch. Um, and then you're really gonna start to utilize that back layer. Um, since I don't have a sketch underneath this, um, it is a pretty rough kind of just general outline where everything is. Um, this tool is not meant to be, to like perfectly replicate what you're seeing, but to get kind of just general information so that as you go through, um, it just helps kind of break everything down and it minimizes the amount of work that you have to do with the brush later on. So instead of having to continually um, go in and fill everything in with your brush, simplifies it quite a bit so you are not having to do that work of constantly going back in and refilling your information. Otherwise, um, pretty simple once you get the hang of it. Um, I would say just as you start working, again, think of kind of those simple layers thinking of where you're seeing information. Um, and then once you have kind of those general layers, those general pieces of information, then start to work at, um, at moving forward into, into that detailing. So um, right now I just kind of have like my layers of space that I'm seeing. Um, then from there, then I might start to look at adding like the structure of the buildings that I'm seeing, seeing some of those smaller parts, adding in the clouds that I'm seeing at the top. Um, but with this one, I want you to just kind of get comfortable with going um, and toggling between the lasso tool, the paint bucket, and the eyedropper if you're using that to select out your colors. Um, but ends up being a really nice, helpful tool. It saves you a lot of time overall and allows you to block out a composition pretty easily and with not too much effort. So um, assignment itself, I would say, as you select one of these, I would say spend no more than like 30 minutes on this. Um, I would say just focus on kind of base layers first, get to what kind of like detailing or smaller elements you can, but mainly just kind of blocking out composition for the stretch and explore. Otherwise, that's what I got for you. Um, let me know if you have questions, but you should be good to go.